Alright, what's going on guys? This is Deep Death Smasher and today I am back again with another part of the beginner's guide. In today's topic, we are going to be covering how to build your characters, make them stronger, identify what kind of type they are, and how to get really good accessories. So first of all, now of course, once you start the game, you are always going to need 6 stars to be at level 200 and at their best of their abilities. So once you get those characters to level 200, I'm going to show you exactly how to build them. So as you guys know, the characters can either be melee or ranged, but that doesn't really matter. We're going to take a look at what their types are and how to identify them as, as three types of characters. Strong attack damage characters, normal attack damage characters, and hybrid characters. And we're going to be basically telling you which is which and how to identify them in terms of their stats and skills. So we're going to start off directly with a normal attack damage character. And there are two types of normal attack damage characters. Characters that just have a bruiser and characters that have flurry. So first of all, we're going to start off with normal attack damage character and we have here White Zangetsu. He's already at level 200 so he has the best of his stats. So anyways how to exactly identify how a character is a normal attack damage between a strong attack damage by looking at their stats. Alright so when looking at a character's stats so we, we see the stamina, attack, defense, focus, and spiritual pressure. You want to ignore all of those and just look at the attack and spiritual pressure. The spiritual pressure is the amount of output your strong attacks will do as well as when it comes to using the special. And the attack is basically the damage output that you do when doing normal attacks. And in White Zangetsu's case, we have a high attack of 755 and a low spiritual pressure of 610. So you can easily identify that he is a normal attack damage character. However, you're also going to have to look at his skills. So, uh, right now, uh, he isn't equipped. He is equipped with Lynx. But overall... Okay, there we go. So, uh, White Zangetsu, when it comes to uh, magnifying his normal attacks, he has a 50% Bruiser, as, a, as well as a 20% normal attack damage link. And a Bruiser basically... Uh, boosts your normal attacks by a specific number, for example, since he has a 70% increase in his normal attacks, he gets a 70% increase overall and does way more damage. That, some, that 755 attack will uh, basically increase thanks to the Bruiser. However, we also have characters that have Flurry. So we're going to take a look at a unit that has Flurry, for example, we'll take a look at One-Armed Yama. So, One-Armed Yama, as you can see, he has similar stats as White Zangetsu, just that his spiritual pressure is overall higher. But his, but he has a skill called Flurry, which is a thing, which is a thing that most normal attack damage units have that use that are being used in PvP have. And basically, what Flurry does is that it does double the damage of the normal attacks. So basically, it's like a double Bruiser and it's at 100% instead of being 50%. So basically, just by having Flurry, you have a 100% Bruiser and your attacks will hit, will hit twice. So next up, we have Strong Attack Damage characters and we'll be taking a look as an example with Trubanka Ichigo. So as you can see, his attack is lower but has a really high SP of 778. And he, and he also has a skill called Frenzy, which doubles the hits of a strong attack. However, there are, there are strong attack damage characters that have that do not have Frenzy, but have a high SP. For example, we're going to be taking a look at Yuha Bak. So, he has, he, the, the stats are somewhat similar, if not higher. However, this guy lacks Frenzy. Instead, what he has is a 50% Berserker. Well, it's an, it's an increased strong attack damage of 50%, but but the skill that magnifies the strong attacks are uh, called Berserker. And because um, it's at 50%, it's kind of half a frenzy and it kind of makes it difficult to take out enemies 
when using your strong attacks. And yeah, basically some characters will have uh, Frenzy and some will not. And you Bak is a big example here that does not have Frenzy but has a high spiritual pressure. And next up is hybrid units. So as an example, we're going to take a look at a um, big example will be White Ichigo. Now, as you can see, the stats almost are exactly the same. He has a, a balanced stats between attack and spiritual pressure. 665 attack and a 651 spiritual pressure. However, he has a really low bruiser and berserker of around 30% each. So... Building him, building him kind of varies between most of the units. So now that we have that out of the way, we're going to show you how to build these characters. So first of all, we're going to start off with normal tech damage characters right off the bat. We're going to take a look at White Zangetsu and how to build him correctly. Because he is a normal tech damage unit. So because he is a normal tech damage unit, and uh, he doesn't have flurry. What you want to give him is normal tag damage, soul traits, and um, accessories that multiply the amount of damage your normal tags do. So for normal tag damage characters, what what you want to do for character links is basically give these kind of soul traits. How you can basically get these soul traits is basically by getting characters, summoning for them. Whatever you get, you get. Anyways, here's the most fundamental part, the accessories. So for when building a normal tech damage character that has a really high bruiser, what you want to do is basically give them a chappy, a hollow bait, and a pupples. These three accessories right here, they basically increase the amount of damage that your normal techs do. And you can even get secondary effects off of them, because as you can see, I have 30% attack as secondary effects on all accessories. And look at the attack stat that I get overall on White Zangetsu. It's a really... I get an extra 1,284 extra damage output for my normal attacks. Including the, seven, the, the already 70, 755 attacks that I already have. Attack stat that I already have. But however... What, you might want to be careful because there are some normal attack damage characters that have a, a certain skill called Bombardment. But first we're going to get into the territory of what those skills are for de Bombardment and, de and Devastation. So Devastation is basically a skill that will increase the amount of damage your special will do. However, there is a, se a second skill called Bombardment that basically does double the amount of damage that you can do with a special and, and, and basically allowing you to nuke him. So for example, we're going to take a look at uh, White Day Tsukishima. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a unit who has a uh, bombardment. A big example is White Day Tsukishima because he has a uh, good normal attack damage unit that has a 60% bruiser, a 40% berserker, a nice high SP. Well, it's not the best, but it's still good. And he has Bombardment. So really, for a unit like him, I don't recommend chapping him. What I do recommend is just giving him a random accessory that gives him a 30% attack as a secondary accessory. Uh, secondary effects, excuse me. And an example being a Yuki for me, with 30% attack. So anyways, now we're done with normal attack damage. I don't know what Anyways, now we're going to take a look at units that have Flurry. A big example would be Yamamoto, the one on Diversion. And basically, um, this guy has a skill called Flurry, which is equivalent to a 100% Bruiser. And, it's, and basically, it doubles the amount of damage your normal attacks will do, depending on how high the, normal, the attack stat even is. Anyways, uh, because um, he, uh, he has Flurry, you don't need to increase his attack any more than that. Rather, for PvE and PvP, because uh, you're also going to auto with this guy, and you want to take less damage in PvP, you're going to give him damage reduction links. Because they're literally the best way to go for when it comes to units who have Flurry. So, yeah. 
And now we're gonna move on onto building strong attack damage characters. So, big example here will be Chubankai Ichigo. He has Frenzy, a high spiritual pressure. And because he has a high spiritual pressure, what you want to do with strong attack damage characters is that you want to be able to spam your strong attacks as frequently as possible. So what you want to do, in terms of links, is that you want to give them strong attack recharge links. Having three strong attack recharge links will efficiently reduce the amount of time you need to wait for your strong attacks. Thus being able to create you spam them very frequently. Because with because he already has a strong attack recharge link built built into him, giving him uh, three extra ones will basically allow him allow his first strong attack to come back in just four seconds, which is really short. Now for accessories, uh, you want to rely on increasing his spiritual pressure, and the main focus is the Yuki and fortification build, and uh, of course it's recommended to have. SPS secondary effects, and as a third accessory, just have any accessory of your choice with 30% SP, which can be either between a tension tie, however you're gonna have way less health because this will already remove some health, however this will allow you to nuke with your special quite efficiently, or you can even give them a robe, which for me it's better because I have some health, a bit more health, or you can give them a uh, Popples. For if you want it to do any extra damage when waiting for your strong attacks to recharge. Anyways, it's up to you. Just have 30% SPS secondary effect. And uh, that's how you build strong attack game characters. And now we're gonna be looking at uh, units who don't have frenzy, like Yu Ha Ba. Yu Ha Ba Ha. Anyways, um, accessories uh, kind of the same. Or you can just basically, you know, have the, the secondary effects be at, uh, attack, so that way you also deal some damage to, with your normal attack. And uh, if you're using them for PvE, the best links to give them is a mix and match between strong attack damage and strong attack recharge. Because uh, he he doesn't have frenzy and has a 50% berserker, it's kind of really recommended to do this. But, now for PvP, we're going to take a look at him in another aspect, because he's a uh, character mainly going to be used for PvP than for, for PvE. But you can still use him for PvE, he's okay. Anyways, last set of units are the hybrid units. Now, for one building hybrid units, they're going to want to heal them thir uh, Yuki with 30% SP, Puffles with 30% attack, and either a holo bait with 30% SP or a fortification pill with 30% attack. Yes, I know it's 20% SP, it's not the best, but I'm gonna have to make deal with it. And then the links, it's a mix, mix and mash between strong attack and normal attack. Now because Yukio already has or, uh, a 60% bruiser into him, well 40% bruiser and a 20 normal attack damage link, uh, he already has a high um, increase when it comes to his normal attacks, however, he has a 30% Berserker, thus his strong attacks will do less damage. So for me, it was kind of best to give him two extra strong attack damage links and then give him Frenzy Grimjaw, so that way I can evenly increase both strong attack and normal attack, uh, normal attack increase. Uh, however, uh, while they are the most recommended builds to go with, uh, when it comes to getting the best damage, it's not the it's not really the best. So really, what you want to go is for full stamina damage links and low stamina damage links. Now, what these links are is that they can boost your uh, strong attacks and normal attacks. In the case of full stamina, it's by 20% for both normal attack and strong attacks. However, for the uh, for the full stamina one, you need to be at full stamina, so if you lose any extra health, you're pretty much fucked. Because you won't be able to uh, have the extra increase for both the strong attacks and normal attacks. And uh, low, dam low damage, uh, same thing, just that to get the extra effects, you need, you need to be at low damage. I mean, 
but just to get the extra increase for both normal attacks and strong attacks, you need to have low health. And they basically increase by 30%. So having three of these kind of links, however, it's not recommended because when doing harder sessions and PvE, um, you you can die pretty easily, so it's not recommended. Especially for a, a character like Yukio, that doesn't heal, so... Um, yeah, that's how you build the hair. Alright, so how you can get uh, these uh, accessories is by simply playing PvE in general and... Oh wait, hold on, I went to the co-op room by accident. I, by accident, my bad. So really, uh, the best way to get accessories is by collecting two, uh, two star and three star accessories which drop on um, single player quests such as uh, these limited events that are on right now. And by summoning on um, accessory tickets. Because uh, when, when, uh, the more you play the game, the more tickets you get for characters and accessories. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, like I said, you can basically evolve these characters from 2 star to 3 star to 4 star to 5 star. You don't need to have this, uh, accessories that are of the same rarity and just evolve them into each other. But however, when you get uh, to a 4 star accessory and you need to evolve it to a 5 star, you need to grind books and powers from accessory fusion trials. They change uh, on the weekends. Uh, we have all five attributes available, and uh, they basically uh, change the attributes day by day. For example, Monday is heart, Tuesday is power, Wednesday is speed, uh, Thursday is tech, and Friday is mind. So yeah. And the one more thing to note is that when evolving five star characters. When evolving four-star accessories, the secondary effect you're not get, you're gonna get is never guaranteed to be the one you want. Sometimes you can get as a secondary effect a nice stat boost for a specific stat, and sometimes you will get a shit stat boost for a specific stat. For example, hold on, let's see, there should be one around here. This, sh okay, no, no, I need I need a good example here, bro. Good. Hold on, I'm gonna look for one. There's gotta be some. Okay, for example, this puzzle I have right here has a 3% spiritual pressure. And it's terrible. And I wanna get it to either a 30% attack or a 30% SP for hybrid boards. So, what I really do is that. Well, you can reroll these, but there are two ways. You can either sacrifice an existing 5 star accessory that you already own. Or, you can get editing brushes. These editing brushes can be obtained through Extreme Co-op on both 3rd Seat and 7th Seat. However, on 7th Seat, they're kind of a bit harder to grind, while on 3rd Seat, you're guaranteed to get at least two of them. So it's kind of tough. And, uh... So yeah. So it's kind of tough, but really, if you want to, if you want to get the best of the best, you have to get up to extreme uh, third seat for extreme co-op. And uh, the only other ways to get the uh, editing brushes is Senkai Mon quests, and sometimes uh, as a as a random gifts from guild quests. Like like I said, it's completely random from guild quests. And these brush and rerolling accessories, they are all completely RNG based. Getting a specific uh, secondary effect is literally the same as trying to pull a 5 star character that you want. They're literally such a bitch. So, yeah. And uh, that about wraps it up for part 4 of the Beginner's Guide. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the